Warning, the following video contains close-up shots of wing-up wing parts. Sealed bag contents of this kit has recklessly been opened purely for your viewing pleasure. It's not for the faint-hearted. Welcome to Model Kit Stuff and welcome to a first impressions video looking at this beautiful Wingnut Wings Halberstadt C1 or 2 early version. As this box says, it's 132 scale, it's a high quality scale model kit set and we will be looking at it closely, not through the, the veil of plastic. We will be opening the bags, we will be having a proper good look at it. Why, you might ask? Well, I've not bought this as part of some retirement plan or make myself rich plan. I've bought this because it's a model and models need to be built to reach their full potential. And that's what I'll be doing with this at some point in the future. Not right now, not necessarily in the near future, but, you know, maybe next year or the year after. But in the near future, we will be building this. Right now, though, we're going to have a proper good look at it. So if you do come across one and it's not at silly money, you might want to just buy into it. Let's take a look. So the box has some beautiful, beautiful artwork on the top. And I have to be honest, because this is a wing nut wings kit and you get all this metalized um, front fascia and stuff, uh, it, it feels quality right from the start. And I will probably carefully... Uh, remove the edges of this box lid and turn this into a framed picture just because it's wing nut wings and it proves that I had it. Um, they, they are a beautiful thing just to own. Um, on our sides we've got copies of the information that's um, on the top and then on this one we've got a little bit of um, information in various languages, um, you know, choking hazards and that sort of stuff and then finally on this side sorry my boxes come apart at two edges but they have been in storage for quite some some time i picked this one up from hallens um uh, a week or two ago now as i'm recording this it is um first uh, what is it the 5th of march 2023 uh, and the last lot of stock has just been cleared um, to some distributors so this is it we're never going to see them again unless someone's got the tooling and the um, uh, tooling hasn't been scrapped to recover um, assets we might be lucky who knows they might come back but I don't think so somehow this side we have a bit of history um, and we have our paint options so we've got five of them there um, Four of them all have the same bleached lozin effect on the uh, fuselage um, and then have lozenged wings and what have you. Um, and then this one has this lovely yellow and deep royal blue striping and that's quite distinctive. And I have seen that built and it looked really nice, but I am most likely going to do this one. I love the red flames. Um, yeah, really, really pretty, a little bit different, and I'm always drawn to red, don't know why. Um, we have a little bit of history here, um, tells us that it was a highly successful escort fighter and infantry support aircraft that entered service from late July 1917 and was very well regarded for its visibility, climb rate, maneuverability, stability and ease of internal communication afforded by the close nature of the pilot and the gunner. So, they were close enough to be able to shout and be heard. That was all important, I guess. So, there we go. That is the box. I'm going to open it up now, and we can see our contents. Now, if you've never had a Wing Nut Wings kit, um, well, first thing I've got to say is, you're in for a very enjoyable few minutes watching this. 
Um, but what they do is they have some generic sprues that might appear in several different kits. And I'm going to fish out the, the one that is I'm most obviously talking about, which is this one here, which is uh, Sprue E. Um, and it's our Mercedes D3 uh, engine. Uh, you'll probably come across this in several kits. It's why there's different props uh, on there because it's going to be seen in different kits. So, what we've got is a box where the sprue in the main fit the box. Um, they always do that, they always manage to somehow um, get the box and the sprues uh, aligned. Um, but I guess. If they're using the same tooling, they, they know their sprue sizes, so it wasn't difficult to do. We've got one, two, clear parts, three, four, five, six. Bruise. We've got our instructions, which we will look at in a moment, and decals and photo etch. So, without further ado, let's have a look at our instructions. So, we have an A4 colour portrait uh, instruction manual that is stapled together, um, has a nice sort of period yet contemporary feel to it it's not designed to look like an old manual some some model manufacturers are doing that these days um, they've designed it to look sort of sort of period um, in its style rather than uh, emulating um, a document that it isn't uh, we've got uh, a copy of the artwork on the front then we have uh, an extended history uh, carrying on from what we had on the side of the box. Then we have some specification details. So it's quite immersive right from the start. You can read about it. You can understand the size of the aircraft, its speed, maximum speed of 102 miles an hour, um, its armament, its um, sea, flight ceiling. Um, and then it gives you some references as well which is really, really handy. So they have thought about what the modeler wants to do and they have also thought about uh, sparking the imagination because if you're like me, quite often you buy a model because you like the look of it and don't know much or even anything about it. So uh, I don't know a lot about this. I know about um, German First World War aviation uh, fairly basically at a top level but this will give you everything you really want to know about that and possibly lead you into reading more about it. As we turn over the page, just get that back in centre shot, um, we have um, a, a little bit of start off text, we've got some warnings, we've got um, some instructions around assembly, making sure you read it properly, tells you about rigging, what to do if you're installing rigging, um, talks about um, painting and also talks about the decals uh, and how to do them. Um, there's references, hints and tips on their website and then we have um, a little uh, pane with the key in so you'll see all of those as you go through the instructions followed by um, our nice clear paint instructions and a lot of people should take note of this this is really clear and easy to read we have a letter we have a color description then we've got a tamia or humbrol reference and a federal standard where applicable now for me referencing those two paint systems probably the most two popular uh, paint systems for for modelers you could argue humbrol uh, less less so these days but those are the two brands that are probably the easiest to cross-reference with your chosen paint system. So again, thinking about the modeler uh, and accessing that information wherever you are in the world. Uh, our next page, page two, has um, a map of what you should expect in the box. So you can check that off 
I have checked mine off. I thought for a moment that I didn't have clear parts, but it turns out I dropped them on the floor. So after a little bit of panicking and increased heart rate, because you ain't gonna get, get replacements, um, we managed to find them. So that was quite a relief. Um, but yeah, we have two decal sheets. Um, one of them dealing with um, our uh, lozenges, mainly for the wings um, by the looks of it and um, for the, the wheels there. Um, and then we've got our sort of marking sheet. We've got a little bit of photo etch, harnesses, um, machine gun jackets, um, our clear parts, and then our sprues. Anything shaded in this blue, we're not going to be using. And most of that is on this generic sprue for the engine where different parts um, are applicable for different types of aircraft um, and you can see there's one or two parts not being used there probably because there either was um, a release of a different uh, model type or they plan to as we flip over and we go to page three we start our construction and you can see the steps are really easy they show you what you're doing they highlight things in blue that you're you're either just putting in or have just done um, and you've got these big arrows swooping you down into where you need to be going so they do have step numbers, but the step is basically the whole page. So you're working through everything in this page and you can pretty much do it in the sequence you want. Again, another thought about the fact that all modelers are different and want to build differently. Some people will build it up and paint it. Some people will build up all the individual parts and then assemble it or a combination. Personally, I find with wing nut wing kits, and I've only built one, that you do a lot of detail painting right from the art off. Um, and it actually ends up being a immer very immersive build. It's how I tend to work um, generally um, anyway. So I tend to work in little stages and do all the detail painting and then uh, and so on. And I find that a more enjoyable way of working. So this works for me. Um, we've got um, we've got lots of information as well around what things are. So here they're telling you it's a cardboard tube for the wireless aerial. Okay, <laughs> you know a, a lot of manufacturers you just stick that there. You don't know what it is, what it's made of. You don't know anything about it other than you've got to stick it there. So again, another lovely part and feature of these instructions. Um, we've got some hole drilling instructions here, it's giving you the diameters um, in millimetres, which is great. Um, and it tells you even what you're drilling the holes for. Uh, remove, uh, removing parts, it's telling you why. Remove late production, empty shell shoot detail. So you don't want that on the early. So we've got to remove it. So it's just lovely there is there is you're not left with any questions now i wonder what that is why are we removing that you know exactly because it's told you um then we have a little blow up here um of what i assume is the wireless set yeah uh, um tells you that it was not always carried so it becomes an option gives you the information around there um and then look at all those all every one of those little square boxes is a decal one, two, three, four, five, six, seven decals on that one piece that will be that big. We'll have a look at it when we have a look at the plastic. Um, so, yeah, uh, we're building up our seat on top of our fuel tank. That's not dangerous at all. <laughs> I think health and safety rules were, were maybe slightly laxer than, than they generally are today. Um, but then, of course, you you're in the air in something that's basically wo wooden string so I think that might be a, a, a better way to go maybe um, so we're building up the uh, fuel tank and we are um, putting it in place with a seat on it we've got the radio set at the back we've got a framework which is going to end up I'm sure being the cradle for the engine um, we can see the uh, rudder controls there you go rudder pedals are in there uh, again, no guesswork as to what anything is. Um, we've got 
um, little instructions within the instructions note the direction of the part so it's possible to get them wrong so they point out what make sure you don't get them wrong all really really nice so at the end of the first step we've pretty much got this assembly uh, done with these controls on when we go to step point two it says cockpit continued and we're build, building up the outer frame again lots of detail painting some items to be removed because we've got the um, earlier version you can see the compass there um, and the, the wireless aerial reel and thing. you just it's just lovely isn't it very very clear what you're doing what where your decals are going what color you're painting it's just lovely um, so we're then building up that frame um, we have um, an amplifier again not always carried but hey if it's an option i'm probably going to put it in um, and then we're putting in the rear gunner's seat um, then we've got uh, what's that um, air pump for the pressurized fuel tank instrument panel um, then again we've got a nice color reference picture for the harness this is what the harness looks like. It's a common type if you've built uh, German First World War aircraft. Again, this is the, the type that you will no doubt have, have had on your model. So, yeah, really lovely. Then we turn over, and this is actually a continuation of step two um, because we can see step three there. So, again, step two, full page. But then we're coming over and we're dealing with uh, mainly painting and decals. It says interior painting guide. And just look at that. We've got all this wood. Um, we can see our harnesses there, uh, which are made of photo etch. We, all the little things are being picked out. So I always find with um, Wingnut Wings kits that you need to be cross-referencing the painting guide with the instructions because I'll see if I can find an example. Uh, no, I can't obviously, but where you've got two colours on a part, they'll often put um, the colour plus a colour. Uh, but because I've just pointed that out, they've not done it. Um, but it, so yeah, um, you do, in fact, let me show you. These other instructions here, you can see K plus N, and you don't know which bits you're painting what unless you cross reference. So uh, it's always worth flicking ahead flicking through the instructions getting an understanding um, at a basic level of how things should look we've got all the interior paint guys how much of that you're going to see i don't know because we do have a, a, a bulkhead there a wooden bulkhead um, you can see through there a little bit but yeah i'm not sure you'll see a lot of that but it's there you can do it you can you can make it as real as you want um, then we have uh, the interior rigging guide, which um, this one is perhaps a little bit more difficult to read. You've got two different colours, control wires and seat support. So uh, although they're both the same size, um, I think um, interesting that they, they have picked out in two different colours so you understand what is what. So a control wire is likely to be going much further and connecting to something else somewhere else on the aircraft the the wings the tail uh, or so on and the and the seat support is likely to be terminating within the area that you can see it so that makes your, your two basic differences step three is building up our engine um, this is a, a generic set of instructions that they plop in um, because they're using generic parts on a lot of the kits takes you very clearly through the steps um, and you can see uh, the paint colors as well here um, very very nicely done they do sometimes modify these instructions at this stage depending on uh, the aircraft and how it's being assembled and you do get some variations depending on which um, uh, aircraft it's going in, pipework goes in different directions and so on. But the basic engine remains the same. Got some nice black and white contemporary uh, reference pictures, which is really, really good. Another lovely aspect of Wingnut Wings is the number of reference pictures. You get 
so that you don't have to bother spending hours on the internet. So we then have the build instructions for the engine again. This is depending on which paint scheme you're doing. So this is A, B, C and E and the previous one was D. And you'll see that there are one or two differences depending on um, which um, aircraft you're doing. These things were constantly being uh, improved and updated and um, trying to get the best out of it and improve performance all the time. So there was a lot of changes going on, sometimes even personalised changes by the pilots as well. Then uh, when we go to step five, uh, we're starting on the uh, fuselage, which includes mounting the engine um, into its uh, uh, brackets there. We've got some nice close-up details of, of what we're doing, where things align. Um, then we're adding the generator on, um, so that's a two-part generator, all painted the same with a decal on, um, and then we've got some detail to go on the other side of the engine and uh, the flywheel and so on. Um, some details on the fuselage to be removed as part of the initial prep, and then having painted the fuselage halves, we can then put them together. Um, so. We're putting in the first half and then we're adding the machine gun. We can see the ammunition feed here um, and we've got a, a photo etch um, cooling jacket that we need to wrap around it. Um, so I think we have options. I think we have a plastic one or what they call the high detail one where we've got just the shaft of the barrel uh, and then we're going to wrap that around. But you anneal that and bend it round. You'll have no problems fitting that just takes a little bit of careful rolling. Then we go to step six, which they call fuselage and tailplane. Um, again, more parts being removed, this time for the other half of the fuselage. Um, we're adding a small part on the inside. Um, and then we've got a little note here about apply lozenge, camouflage decals over a gloss painted, not just clear coated surface. Um, usually the decals are a little bit translucent in places so they want you to put a, a base color down um, now I'd, I'd have to ha you'd have to have a look but I assumed that there was no decals for that but I might be wrong um, and then we're putting the second part of the fuselage and we can see we've got this lovely air exposed engine there. Um, we can see into uh, what we've done, so most of what we've built up is visible, which is always nice. Um, and then we've got uh, different nubs to knock off, depending on which version we've got. Then we've got a nice reference picture of the, the aircraft ditched. Um, so, uh, but it gives you a nice view of the underside, doesn't it? Um, then on step seven, we are on the bottom wings. Now, these wings, as you can see, they're just plonked on. That's because they're solid. We're not bringing halves together. Um, so we'll have a look at those um, in a minute. But uh, wings go on. Then we've got the uh, ring mount for the machine gun. Um, and then we've got two little uh, fuselage covers uh, going in there, which are, which will just separate the uh, cover the bulkhead up and, and little bits and pieces. Um, then we've got more reference pictures referencing what we're doing and a description about what you're looking for, um, making you aware of different colours. You know, that is a lot brighter than that it's saying, you know, but that, that looks like it's been enhanced in some way. But anyway, oh, it's pointing out bullet holes, actually. Then we flip over to step eight, more reference pictures, um, which is really handy. And then we're putting on the bit that you always get nervous about, um, and that's putting in the struts. Um, always nervous because you need to make sure they're aligned and they do tend to flap around a little bit and, and what have you. But um, hopefully uh, these will be nice and nice and tight. Fits usually pretty good on a wing nut wings kit. Um, and you can always um, put them in place 
Um, put a little bit of glue in just to tack them in and then glue them properly when you've aligned them with the top wing. Uh, so I always find that's a fairly good way to go. Um, then we've got some, well, they call them generation, uh, generator access covers. So these little blisters that we're putting on there, uh, putting the rest of the tail on as well. Um, and other than the top wing, it feels like we're nearly there really, doesn't it? Um, but quite a busy set of instructions. We've got decals, we've got paint instructions, we've got um, parts to remove, um, all sorts of bits and pieces in there. Um, step nine, uh, engine cowling and exhaust. So um, the engine cowling is this fairly small strip here, which really focuses on giving you a cover between the engine and the propeller. Um, there um, and we've got the exhaust manifold going on afterwards the manifold is outside which I guess helps with with cooling or was just it wouldn't fit in any other way I don't know um, more reference photos which are really nice and then a blown up photo uh, showing um, what you've got to remove there's some late production radiator shutter detail that has to be uh, removed um, and then more parts going on, some little bit of detail there in this area on the aircraft. Then as we turn over to step 11 now, um, you can see that we're putting the, the top wing together um, and putting it on uh, with some uh, air aerolions, control rods, um, going in place as well so lots of dry fitting and testing all of that all sorts of options around there then we're building up the uh, undercarriage shows you some nice pictures of building that up depending on which version you're doing um, and then we've got instructions on not gluing uh, putting the uh, hub covers on um, you might want to put your decals on before you do that, possibly. Um, then in step 12, we're going to the propellers. Again, different types, depending on which one you're doing. We've got different propeller types, some with a cover, some without. So uh, depending on which one you're painting, um, depends on what you end up doing. I think I've got a spinner cover on the one I plan to do. Um, so final details, lots more reference pictures as we're doing the final details and they're trying to point out what things are and how they work. It's really, really lovely. Um, so, yeah, very, very nice. And see there's a map case there being handed over and what have you. Some of these are official propaganda photos, I would imagine, but they do give you a good insight into the equipment. Step 13, observers, armament, and optional accessories. Um, so we've got um, some different guns there with barrel ammunition. Um, and again, you've got an option to do just the plastic part or to do um, a more detailed one. Um, even have an option to put a gun sight on it, which is interesting. I wouldn't have thought they had time for that, but... Uh, it was used in the infantry support role, so I guess you could swap out your gun and decide which one you wanted mounted, so that's interesting. Uh, and then we've got um, the flares and uh, what have you, um, which are contained on the engine sprue, so uh, you can put them. They were often strapped on the outside of the fuselage, so it'd be interesting to see where, where they're going. Um, then if I turn this around so you can see it better, we've got um, rigging instruction and we do have some different sizes here. So um, we've got E, which uh, we've got this one here, the yellow one, which is only relevant to E. Uh, we've got this red one, which is relevant to A and E. We've got this, uh, this one, which is only relevant for B, C and D. That's actually, Wow, that's actually flat, so you couldn't just use um, your usual rigging materials for that. Uh, that's interesting, because that's 0.3 by 0.1. Uh, and then you've got um, blue, which is used on everything. And we can see here that a lot of it is blue, so all of our uh, 
wing tensioning is done in the blue um, and then we've got so right so it's round these these supports here are round on a and e and they're elongated on bcd so maybe uh, i mean it's quite small but maybe some stretch sprue so that you could uh, stand a flat on it might be the way to go for those those two possibly um, let's flick over the page because it feels like we've got quite a bit more to go really so um more period photographs that's how they generally end the instructions um helping you with decal placement and what have you um and then we're on to our paint schemes so um a uh, is from uh october 1918 which gives you this blue and yellow which is really really quite nice but um yeah stand, it stands out doesn't it it's really nice but from a decal point of view it's a little bit low on markings um then we've got um this which i i consider to be like the, the classic paint scheme for this aircraft the, the the bleached um the bleached um look of the colors um it's i i always think that's quite a, a classic for this um yeah, and that's really quite nice. There's lots of pinks in there in the lozenge pattern. Um, Grey hub on the wheel. Um, so it's taking you through all that. Um, and talking about all the decals. Then um, C, which is the one I plan to do, which is um, early 1918. You get the combination of the, the classic bleached uh, lozenge and then this lovely um, rich um, red colour um, and as we can see the spinner, uh, a nice laminated propeller. Um, so that I think will be very eye-catching when done. And look, you've got white underneath on the wings. Um, so it'll be quite a bright, colourful aircraft that. Yeah, very, very nice. Then finally, D, again, uh, classic bleach markings um, with a pale underside um, to try and help it being uh, visible and identifiable. Um, again, they're, they're, all, <laughs> they're all really, really nice, aren't they? Um, and then we've got some more reference photographs, which helps you with uh, decal placements and what have you. And there's a little diorama. Uh, inspiration for you if um, if your model doesn't go to plan. Then we've got uh, paint instructions for E1, probably the busiest in terms of markings, um, and and pr probably would be my second choice if they hadn't included uh, the red flames. This is one I'd probably go be going for uh, this bright white tail plane and what have you. Very nice looking um, aircraft. So yeah. Um, lovely. Then we have some more references, some more images of the downed aircraft. And we can see a little British tank in the background. Um, and then we've got some notes on the people involved in putting this together. And then on the back, you have a little list of your, what's the contents of the box and other kits that you can um, look out for. That is the instructions. Okay, I am going to be carefully opening these bags so that we can put everything back in, keep it nice and safe. But... The moment you do this, you devalue your kit. So you only do this if you know 100% you're going to build this kit at some point. And, you know, all being well, that is the plan. So, decals next. And we have... 
more than one sheet backing paper and we've also got our photo etch in that bag so we'll look at that next so decals we have a sheet with markings and we have a sheet with lozenges now it does say printed by cartograph in Italy on the bottom designed in New Zealand so we know that uh, uh, they are going to be really good and my experience of Wingnut Wings decals is that they are the best even of cartograph decals because just have a look at how much um, backing film there is around these decals there is virtually none I mean obviously in some areas they have to uh, where things are being spaced and what have you but virtually none and this has all been divided up so you've got the different markings all grouped together um, a bit like Airfix did or I, I think we're now saying used to do um, everything's numbered really clearly and look, we've got lots of tiny little decals there at the bottom. Some nice gold, uh, gold ones, silver ones. We've got dials, um, some nice bright colours on there as well. So all sorts of bits and pieces on there. That's a lovely decal sheet. And then our flames, which um, I fancy using. Yeah, very nice. So that's our first sheet, and then our second sheet has um, our um, lozenges on. And uh, yeah, so these ones here are for covering our wheels, and then we've got uh, what looks like tail, tail planes, and then wings. So not fused large. And the lozenges do carry on to the fuselage in some areas. I'm fairly sure that is, unless that is fuselage, um, uh, yeah, might be, might be. We'd have to check and cross-reference, but um, I don't think so. I think that's all wings. But they're very nicely done. Huge decals. You'll have to put those down very carefully. Lovely there. One of the things I always do when I get a new kit is if the decal sheet is large like this and you can see it fills the box so it's not going to move around. I face them down into the box and then put the instructions on top. That way I know there is nothing going to damage the surface of those decals. If, there, if it's a smaller sheet um, then put them in the middle of your instructions. Uh, and then you know they're nice and safe. So our photo etch now, um, it's primarily, uh, we've got a, a, some form of radiator cover, a cooling jacket for our machine gun, uh, there's some form of panel, and then we've got the uh, safety belts, uh, the harnesses for the, the uh, seats in the aircraft. So these will paint up really well. You'll want to uh, anneal them so that you can easily bend them into a natural shape um, yeah nice set of photo etch and as always with wing knot wings a nice little touch is you get this little plate that you can um, paint and polish up and uh, it's a nice little display and although most of the time I would say I don't like the fact that the manufacturers put the name on it this is wing knot wings so I really don't mind right then sprue a and as, as is always the case or appears to be the case with wingnut wings kits sprue a is the one that contains all the small uh, little parts primarily around the cockpit and i think that's because the way that they've designed um, their kits is that um, the engine is usually e or f and that tends to be often the same sprue in different kits but the 
cockpit area is often fairly unique to that type of aircraft and so they get put on Spruway. So Spruway has, as you can see, a whole array of parts. Um, so we'll just go through them very quickly. Um, we've got things like the spinner there. Um, we've got the frames for inside the uh, cockpit. Um, we've got some of the controls for the for the aircraft. I can see a compass there. Um, uh, some chain. Uh, we've got our machine guns. Some of them for jackets and some of them with a moulded jacket on. Um, we've got seats. You can see there's cushions there, which is very nicely done. Radio sets. Uh, we've got some what look like uh, flares. Um, struts, bombs, more struts and seats. Um, more structures. Uh, what looks like the landing gear, um, big panel there, the aerodynamic panel. Um, that looks like the seat for the engine, might be wrong. We've got the wheel hubs, uh, more struts, uh, flare gun, some form of fan. We've got a little blister which go, um, sits on outside the engine um, we've got the manifold part of the pilot's seat there some very delicate framing um, a row of stick grenades some form of ring could be the engine ring or the gun gun mounting ring that's definitely something to do with the gun ring and then some racks there's lots of stuff here what I will do is I will take some photographs and at the end we'll play out with some close-ups of some of this detail uh, and then I can get the lighting right and make it really look good. But that is stunning. There is there is flash on the sprue but I don't see anything um, popping up at all on any of the parts. We do have a little bit of stepped seam in places. Um, but it's nothing major. I mean, it's it's all lovely and crisp, and the detail is stunning, as we would expect. I'm gonna flip it over, um, and we can see more detail in some of these parts. But mainly, these are the unseen surfaces. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with them. That is lovely really really nice i'll take some photos like i say for the end so let's have a look at sprue b okay sprue b now and uh, that's um wings and tails and as always with wingnut wings they are solid and not solid and full of sink just solid <laughs> they are a thing of beauty um we've got a little bit of roughness on a couple of the edges um but it's very very minor um, but we've got lovely detail running throughout these wings we can see um, the stressed effect of the material on there um, and we can see uh, where the ribs are it's all very nice we've got little metal plates in there in places um, lots of really tiny detail on the um, on the uh, tails and things so I'll take some photographs and you can see it up close. Um, and we've got our little locations for rigging marked out as well as the spars. So really, really nice. And everything is on there for all the wings, less the spars. Sprue C is our clear parts. And we've got some form of rod. I don't know if that's a fuel level indicator or something like that, maybe. Not quite sure. Um, and then we've got our windscreen. And I have to say, um, in all fairness of being neutral and not biased, it's, it's um, really heavily distorted. I mean, it's a difficult shape, um, but you can, I've seen better clear parts than that, definitely. So the distortion is pretty bad. And you'd expect a level of distortion. Now, I don't know how distorted these screens were on the actual thing. Maybe this is very authentic, but 
I think it is just not well, uh, not come out of the mould well. It's, it looks a bit lumpy. I don't want to touch it, but it does look a bit lumpy when you look at it. Especially on the inside. If we can get the light to catch. There you go, you can see. So it's not the best clear part. Um, whether you could replace it with acetate or something, I very much doubt. So you're probably going to end up using it anyway. Um, but it is really, really clear. Um, and there's no spider in, so there's just a single um, gate point. So we've only got plastic coming in uh, from one location, so not an issue there, um, other than the distortion, really. Sprue D, and this is where we've got the big meaty parts of, of this aircraft. We've got this huge tailpiece. We've got the uh, joining sections of the wings, the two fuselage halves, engine cowlings, wheels, um, and some of the spars, fuel tank. So uh, let's just have a look at this. So we'll start with the fuselage half. Um, and yeah, we've got some raised, some very fine raised detail on there. Um, we've got these sort of, these look like these open so you can get inside them. So maybe for filler caps or something like that. Um, but some really nice texturing on there. Um, and we can see where the tail's going to go in. Look at the moulding on that. It's amazing, really. Um, and if we flip it over, we'll see we've got um, ejector pins at the, on either side of the visible cockpit. So it won't be an issue. Um, they're raised anyway, so easy to sand out. I've not fully raised some of those. Um, but yeah, we do have some nice detail in there as well. And you can see how this... Um, the, the sort of the, the leather, um, uh, soft leather here that's for cushioning the edges folds over it really nicely. That I mean, I can't even feel a lip on it. It's just lovely. Um, and then we've got our fuel tank, um, all moulded in one piece, no sink, really nicely done. Uh, we'll just have a little bit of seam clean up. Then our spars, we've got some nice moulded in detail. Um, and, and little holes moulded in, really clear, not full of flash or anything. Um, I'm guessing these are parts to do with the wings, although I suspect that is our cockpit floor. Again, with some nice raised fastener detail, and then our tail. I mean, look at that. And some moulding, it's just incredible. Really is incredible. And the um, sprue gates are all joining on the seam where you'd be cleaning up anyway. So it's really nicely thought through. Uh, we've got some pipe work there. Then we've got our tyres and the sidewalls have got raised writing on, which is really nice. If I flip it over, yep, there's raised writing on the other side. It's just, it's just lovely. It's just lovely. I do wish I'd discovered wingnut wings kits earlier. Uh, then we've got our propeller. Um, it has a little name to it, so uh, I'm guessing we've got some other propeller options in here, depending on which um, paint option we're doing. Um, then we've got, I'm not quite sure what that is, looks like some form of bulkhead, but you can see the little material creases on there. Very nice. Yeah. So I'll take some close-up photographs and you can get a better view of that, but uh, another beautiful sprue of parts. So sprue E, and this is the generic engine sprue um, that they use in several kits. And there'll be some of these parts on here which we won't be using. So you can see we've got two different sump bottoms, for example. Um, so depending on... Um, the the aircraft is going in some parts get used some parts don't and you can see we've got four propeller options so if you've never done um, painting a wooden propeller before especially laminate 
have got some spares for practice which is always handy um, but yeah we've got um, some nice details on here um, like I say we've got the sumps we've got the um, the top there that the pistons mount on um, all sorts of bits of pipe work manifolds um, rocker covers and so on all very nice um, and then we have a, a flare gun here with some flares as well um, yeah very very nice so like I say I'll take some photos and you'll see this better but as this is a generic one um, there's still no flash on it there's no issues with it I mean they pump this particular sprue out a lot it's in a lot of their kits and it's just lovely and crisp there's no issues with it at all yeah very nice indeed sprue f this is our last sprue of plastic parts um, and what we've got here are some items that are specific um, to this particular kit so we've got a different tail um, we've got I'm not quite sure what these are to be honest that looks like a different engine cowling um, and what looks like some more dials um, and a specific machine gun some pipe work so yeah and you've got options with jacket uh, for photo etch jacket you've got a little ammunition feed so um, what I imagine is the machine gun mount of some type um, yeah so some uh, slightly different parts that are just for this kit that they couldn't get into spray away I guess right I'll take some photos and then we'll sum up Well, what can you say? What a really nice kit this is. Uh, it's a combination of well thought through uh, instructions um, followed by um, well thought through uh, and well engineered precision plastic parts. So it's everything we're all looking for. As always, Wingnut Wings have left no stone unturned. They've provided the evidence of their findings and their research in the instructions, so you don't need to get your head out of the box at all during the build. Um, I, I can't think of anything that I would say, we could improve on this or we could improve on that. Maybe, possibly the clear parts we could do acetate, maybe to scale difference. I think the simple fact of the matter is, if you can find one, and you can afford it, 
why wouldn't you get it? It's a beautiful, beautiful kit. It was a pleasure to review and I look forward to building it at some point in the future. Thanks for looking in. You enjoy your modelling and I will see you very, very soon.